But as technologies has, have advanced and it's become easier to study anaerobic bacteria, so bacteria that cannot be exposed to oxygen, uh, many of them typically live more in the large intestine, we've been able to really expand our knowledge of the critical role that many of these anaerobic, what are again referred to often as keystone strains, play in the body. One of those keystone strains is this strain called acromancia, or this, this bacteria called acromancia, specifically the strain that Pendulum brought to market is something called acromancia mucinophilia. And it has an extremely important role in the body, particularly as it relates to metabolic health. It does have a role in helping to maintain a healthy immune system, what we would say immune homeostasis. But the other major role is in this idea of metabolic health, how we sort of metabolize, break down the foods that we eat, take the energy that we need, and certainly make sure that we manage things like our blood glucose and, and that doesn't go too high. So how does this work in the body? As I said a moment ago, you know, when you eat a meal, it's actually the strains, uh, specific strains of bacteria like acromancia that eat that meal, primarily the fiber, they then release these signaling molecules called short-chain fatty acids, but those short-chain fatty acids, in particular something called butyrate, binds to receptors on the cells that line the gut. And when they do that, that triggers the cells to release this hormone that many people have been talking about, GLP-1, uh, which is often referred to as the unhunger hormone. GLP-1 goes to your pancreas, tells your pancreas, release insulin because this person has eaten a meal. We want to manage the blood sugar. It goes to your stomach. It slows down your digestion, allows you to digest your food more and also feel more full. And then it travels up the vagus nerve to the brain and triggers feelings of fullness. So the valve shuts off and you stop eating. So that that's a really important role as it relates to, again, how we manage our blood sugar and all the related kind of uh, medical issues that can, can occur when you have insulin resistance and, and poor control of your blood sugar. Acromancia also um, form, uh, provides a, another very important role as it relates to the health of the lining of the gut. And, and maybe to explain it, I should step back to say that the lining of the gut is sort of like a fence where the cells line up like the boards of a fence and you want those boards to line up tightly. There are some proteins that kind of help hold them together so that things can't get through that shouldn't get through. In the case of our gut, there's also sort of a shellac on the outside of that fence that helps to keep uh, the cells of the gut healthy, but also acts kind of like a flypaper, kind of catching things, particles of bacteria, uh, things that have been created, waste that have been created by that bacteria that shouldn't get into our bloodstream. The the shellac, which is called mucin, kind of catches it like, like flypaper, as I mentioned. And one of the things that acromancia does is, like a Pac-Man, it eats up old or degraded mucin, and it stimulates other cells within the lining of the gut to make more mucin. So it keeps that mucin, it keeps that shellac nice and fresh, and really helps us to maintain the integrity of the lining of the gut, which is very, very important for kind of keeping inflammation low and our overall health. And so there are other roles to acromancia that we are beginning to understand, but it's associated with longevity. Uh, people who are, live longer and healthier tend to have higher levels of acromancia, uh, and and certainly has other roles in helping us to stay healthy, but it, it's recognized now as this keystone strain uh, that's that's critically important for human health. Which is right, which is helping with the creation of butyrate and GLP one, and the protection of the wall. So you did say that it was um, anaerobic, right? So it it does not like oxygen. In fact, I think it it cannot accept any oxygen at all. It would be uh, killed. It would be killed, right? So how do you, how do you get it like from wherever you grow it to the person without letting any oxygen anywhere near it? 
Right. Great, great question. And so again, I mean, if you're listeners, you know, historically, you could sort of take bacteria, put it on a plate and come back the next morning and see that it's spread and grown. You, you can't do this with these type of strains. They need to be maintained in an oxygen-free environment. And one of the things that Pendulum did when they realized that they actually wanted to bring this strain of acromancia to the market, really the first company to bring a live acromancia to, to make it available for uh, consumers is they did have to figure out exactly what you've just brought up. How do they keep it from getting exposed to oxygen and get it to where it needs to be? So it took it took the company about three years to figure that out. And then they actually built a manufacturing plant, you know, in uh, in San Francisco to actually be able to produce it and oversee the quality and make sure that it's being made the way that it needs to be made. And so one of the things that they developed was that the acromancy is actually in a vegetable-based, acid-resistant, delayed-release capsule so that when you eat it, 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 it is able to travel all the way to the colon, the lower intestine where the acromancia lives, and there it gets released and, and does its job. But that was three years of work to figure out just that one aspect of how to make that work. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. And I guess that is why these academic institutions are coming to you because uh, you can't get like live acromancia elsewhere. I mean, that's right. You know, you can, there, there are places that are growing it in their research labs, but it's mm-hmm. much, but that's difficult to do. And, and right. that requires a whole level of technology that we've, of course, refined. And so, and for our particular strain. And so that is exactly why, you know, institutions from Harvard to, you know, Mayo Clinic uh, to even international institutions often approach us if, when the investigators want to study uh, our strains for, for human health.